How's it going, everybody? This is Vector the Crocodile from the Chaotix. And today, I will be reading you Blue's Clues Original Pilot. Now, Blue's Clues is one of Bailey Maloney's favorite childhood shows. Basically, it's her favorite Nickelodeon TV show. <laughs> Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. You know, I always liked Blue's Clues. It was a show about a lonely man who lived in his apartment and seemed to have issues solving very simple dilemmas. He was guided by his dog, Blue, a blue dog. It's a great show with a lot of mentally stimulating material. But what a lot of people don't know is that various elements of the original pilot line of the original plot line were stripped out in favor of more family friendly entertainment. The pilot episode created by Tom Kisser and whoever David Venio was was an interesting take on the original idea, though maybe slightly more adult in tone. Steve, for example, is slightly blind. This is why he had his dog, Blue. A seeing eye dog was meant to help him find things. The clues were intended to be the dog trying to assist Steve in things like finding groceries and going to the bathroom. The episode starts slightly different. Instead of the yellow book saying Blue's Clues opening, instead a book titled Disability Aid, Disability Aid for Impaired Humans is shown. A picture of a skeleton man in a top hat with a cane is on the cover. Indeed. The show looks a little different. The show used computer-generated stills to render its backdrops, but these stills were grainier and of lower quality. The art looked fairly unkempt and dirty, for example. Another issue I noticed, which be which became more and more glaringly obvious as time progressed, was that Steve had two dark circles under his eyes. Indeed, Steve looked a little sick. Well, did I know how sick Steve was. Steve was sick. Anyway, Steve played... Steve was played by the same actor, but it was much slower. He had a speech impediment, which made his words slightly slurry. Come on in, he huffed, like Droopy the dog. Blue the dog also looked different. The skin was textured, more like a real dog. While still blue, there were noticeably fur-like hairs on the character model, and the eyes sparkled like a real puppy dog's. In one regard it looked cute, but in another, it just seemed a little off. Steve's shirt was frail and tattered. The walls of the home were kind of dirty, too, with raining wallpaper. Steve's usual sofa chair was dirtier. Some sort of stain was on it. It was hard to make it out. It was hard to make out. Steve went to get the mail. He sang his usual song, but instead of lyrics, it was just the word mail over, over and over again. Mail, 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 mail. He stammered. He shuddered a little and almost fell over. Meow. Sorry if I'm annoying. Sorry if I'm annoying everyone. <clears throat> anyway, he excitedly opened the mail to find nothing. He excitedly opened the mailbox to find nothing but a few bills and an expired coupon for a free Chick Fil A sandwich. Now I don't know what I was expecting. Steve said with a scowl friends. There was, there was a long pause. Well, except for you kids. He pointed at the camera and smiled at the camera as it zoomed into his face, revealing a disheveled amount of beer stumble. I need something fun to do today, Steve exclaims. Blue is seen in the corner, tugging away at the corner of a rug. As Steve continues to, to talk, the rug is slowly pulled away more and more. Revealing a trap door. A symbol of an eye is carved on the door, 
along with the Latin friends, Saisus Bartus. I, I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. Forgive me if I said that incorrectly. Which roughly translates to unintelligent blind man. Steve is a, Steve is visibly shaking as he adjusts his house thermostat. The thermostat is a real thermostat, not a drawn-in one. In fact, many of the objects that would be drawn in are more like paste on clip pasted on clip art. I need to clean myself, Steve says. He goes into the shower and begins to shower. Suddenly, the soap begins to scream. What are you doing? The soap yells. Steve sees that the soap has a face. Well, it's a cute smiley face. He looks really confused. He begins to freak out and throws the soap in the toilet, flushing it down while he screams bloody murder. He notices tiny face on all of his other cosmic and hygienic pro products. Hygienic products. What's next? <laughs> Saving toothpaste? The voice said from the other room. I just imagined that, Steve said. Blue, he yelled. Help me find something to do. Blue winked at the camera and led Steve into the kitchen area. I'll take him out, too, a voice said from the other room again. Steve walked into the kitchen. He had a small fire burning in the corner. The utensil drawer was shaking. There were living utensils in there. He knew it. Steve bumped into the side of the table and fell down. Blue placed a palm print, the first clue. Sitting on the table, behind, Steve's, behind Steve was a blue paw print of a cucumber. The first clue. Blue seemed slightly sinister looking. There were six copies of slightly transparent blue sprite all laid over each other. Look, a voice yelled. What? Steve, Steve said. Right there, the voice yelled. What is it? It was the same thing as it always was, a clue. And the clue was clearly visible. So why couldn't Steve see it? A strange figure in a cloak slid across the room without moving its legs. It may have been a prop on wheels, but whatever that was, it took several random items, such as chairs and bowls, as it made its rounds across the room. What is it? Steve said. The flames continue to eat the background. It's a clue. A, grizz a grizzled older man's voice yelled. How can you not see that? It's right there. It's right sticking there. Steve squinted and, and picked up the cucumber. He opened up his notepad and tried to draw it. But he was shaking too much. And ended up drawing something weird. I couldn't really tell what it was. It looked like a picture of Charlie Chaplin at a children's birthday party. Steve was then led to the second clue. Which again had the man yelled, yelling angrily. You can hear me. I know you can. Whispered that slithery voice from the other room. Steve needed another shower. He showered again, and then found the second clue. It was a jar of Vaseline. He couldn't even draw this. It, it was just a straight line following the camera cutting back to him with one eye closed. A few seconds later, Steve is on the phone. Steve is seen on the phone with his doctor. I feel like my dog is trying to kill me, and all the utensils, furniture, and appliances in my house have faces. The phone is disconnected. Steve is shown walking over to his door to lock him with great paranoia. He drags a huge deadbolt across the door and turns around to adjust a crooked picture of the room he's in on the wall. And that's where I'll stop for part one. Stay tuned for part two of Vector the Crocodile Reads Blue's Clues Original Pilot.